And sometimes I have to turn them around against the wall. Titian said, um, if you have a painting that's not working, turn it against the wall for two years and then attack it like your worst enemy. <laughs> so, wow. He also said paint with broom, so <laughs> master painter Titian. But um, you know, when I'm done and I have a show or they go up in the rack, it is, you know, when I was younger, it was like, oh, this is painting, I never want to let it go. But now it's just, it's like I've had that thought, I put it down. Um, and now the next one is calling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I have this faith that paintings will find homes, but <laughs> sometimes more than others. But I just is that a good answer? Yeah, it's not a great answer. I mean, <laughs> there was no right answer to it. I yeah, just, you know, to get in your process. They did, yeah, my you can see my um, palette tables over there, and I use I just have to show you this. I use the most beautiful paint just because I'm a total geek. Um, this is old home. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. This is about a two hundred dollar wow. tooth paint, but I'll smell it if you guys want it. <laughs> really, I, I, just, can I, I have it's a question. The most beautiful yeah. medium. Um, when you're when you start a painting, now, okay, just looking at this one, the big one in front of us, you mm -hmm. know, um, there's a, a, a series of different planes and colors in broad um, broad planes of colors, and then there's a lot of smaller lines and overwork on there. And when you're starting a painting, like when you start pulling paint out of the tubes and putting it on your palette and applying it to the canvas, are you thinking about filling the space with broad planes of color first and sort of blocking it out? Or do you no. work on a section and you start getting into the overpainting and the detail and then move on to another area? How does it sort of Neither. evolve for you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, tell me. What's that I, about? I usually, if I draw, I draw um, halfway or two-thirds of the way through a painting if I'm stuck and I can do a drawing from it. And when I say drawing, it's ink and brush is what I use. Um, and, and I'll work on a series. But I start with three marks, like um, a surveyor. And that, this is where looking is so important to me, because um, the location of where this is relative to this, relative to that. And I try and start a triangle pretty far away, so I can start measuring what the scale is, how things are going to fit in. But it's almost like I don't know what the painting's going to be. I just see something there that... Um, I just want to understand visually, mm -hmm. so I move around the painting all the time. And you're looking at real objects, mm -hmm. so is my still have cabinet right there? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just got a bunch of shells the other day. <laughs> in your mind, are you reducing the object into you know the form that it, that we see, or is, is it, or is it just does it just happen in the brush, or what is that? No, I'm thinking uh, carefully, and I'm also thinking this is where the part with the dog in the room is is relevant because I think about the negative space in between objects as like I'm painting the negative by painting the positive shapes and and the negative shapes has a center and it has an axial orientation so you know like I can hold my hands like this or I can hold my hands like that so the space in between these two has a presence but then that is another presence so it's almost it's kind of like chest or something and I'm trying to think on as many layers as I possibly can because that's how my brain works um, did I answer your question <laughs> yeah oh okay yeah I, all over all over all over move a painting start another one um, and then I brought my brushes or I never got out of the chair. I have a question for you. When you um, work with all, all of your mentors, um, how does working with them affect your work and the direction that you take? Mm. Are you affected by their stories? Are you affected by you know the painters that they themselves have worked with, like Jackson Pollock? Sure, or, absolutely. Or by their technique? Or do you watch them? Do they? Mm. What is it that they give? Well, you I them? never watch them paint. Um, I think when I found Nick. I was really hungry for something and I didn't know what it was. I finished my undergraduate and went to the studio school because I'd heard about these teachers and um, he was six weeks late for school. And I had waited tables for like eight months to save up money to move to New York City and everyone kept talking about it, talking about it and there's this big metal door that you pulled to get into the drawing studio which was a couple steps down. The studio school is in the old Whitney Museum which was three townhouses that the Whitney's had so it's this crazy place. 
And excuse my language, but I looked up and I thought, who is this asshole? It was like, come so late. And he started drawing on my drawing and it was like, boom. Every day he would come. And he, he always said he was teaching, and I, I say the same thing, not teaching anyone how to paint, teaching a language. So in the same way that um, I can't sit down on a piano and make any sounds happen, I, I think if you don't have a language, you're just going to grunt. So, so what appealed to me was um, synthetic cubism and how that fits together. So we would work from the model. I worked from the model from when I was 17 to when I was 26. Mm -hmm. When I came out to the pros and I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go find the dog. Um, 